Back in the 1990s, cameras were full of electronics with LCD screens, fancy functions, touch buttons, and obviously autofocus. This camera, on the other hand, the Vivitar V4000, is the total opposite of that. Let's check this out. This camera began its life in the 1980s as the Cassina CT1, an affordable but good quality film camera with basic functions, no electronics whatsoever. Things began to change slightly in the 1990s when it was offered as an OEM version for Canon, Nikon, Olympus and some other brands you've never heard of. Me neither, there were store brands. The Vivitar V4000 is one of them. Compared to other cameras of the time, it was a very basic camera. I mean, look at that. Even the strap is as basic as you can. If you're looking for something fancy on this camera, well, think again. Everything is made out of plastic, but the good news is it's made in Japan. What do you mean, Doc? All the best stuff is made in Japan. Unbelievable. It feels like the manufacturers wanted something back to basics or back to school because these were sold as student cameras back in the day. You can also forget autofocus or automatic exposure. This camera is fully manual. It's even fully mechanical. The batteries are only needed to operate the light meter. Setting the exposure on this camera is straightforward and easy. Just look at that. See the green light over here? It means it's correctly exposed. Plus means it's overexposed and minus means underexposed. Straightforward, easy, perfect. And if you're worried about the lens compatibility, it uses the Pentax K-mount lens, which means that you can use any Pentax K-mount lens on the market. It will work fine, no restriction whatsoever. But now let's talk about the image quality. The camera was either sold as a kit with a 50mm 1.7 or a plasticky 35 to 80 zoom lens. Just have a look at this picture, shot with the zoom lens. Well, nothing to complain about. Or this one. It's good. I mean, the zoom lens, once you stop it down to f8, f11, gives you awesome results. The prime lens, well, it's a prime. And the legend says there is no such thing as a bad prime lens. So that's why we're gonna have a look at some samples I shot with this camera, this lens, and a Kodak T-Max 400 film. Let's check this out. Now the million dollar question is, should you get a camera like this today? And surprisingly the answer is, yes you should. Well, first of all, this is a modern or relatively modern camera. Unlike Nikon FE's or Canon AE-1's, these, they don't need servicing to work, because all of these older cameras, they need something to be done to them. This one, well, just whack a film and batteries inside them, to, you're good to go. Talking about the batteries, the batteries are only used to operate the light meter, so yes, it can work without batteries. And these are LR44, you can find them everywhere. No mercury batteries, no adapters to fiddle around with. It's perfect. At the time of recording this video, this is a camera for sale on eBay for 45 bucks. You can go wrong with that. The fact that these cameras are mechanical and only use a few electronic components means they are utterly reliable. Plus, when Cassina brought back the Voigtlander brand with the Bessa series, they used the same platform as this. So this camera is a legacy camera. And you know, lots of photographers around the world have done their first film, their first pictures at school with something like this. I think these cameras deserve the respect and some consideration even though they are plastic and uh, entry-level cameras. I mean, they're cool, I like them, and so should you. 
But anyway, so that's all I've got for you today. As always, thank you for watching. Leave a like and comment down below and uh, stay tuned for more on my channel. See you next time. Goodbye.